I got the idea for the Movie Lover's Guide to Hollywood about two years ago when I went to uh, the revival of A Star is Born, where they had added 26 minutes that had been um, cut out in the original version. And the whole night was, was very moving and very special. And a lot of the, the footage was old, were scenes that had been done on location. Anyway, after that premiere, I went home and uh, literally that night woke up at 5 o'clock in the morning with an idea to do a guidebook to Hollywood, to Los Angeles, that only took in uh, sites that had some connection to the movies and the history of the movies. I really am a writer first and a photographer second, so I, I never really went out of one, my way to take a lot of pictures when I was on trips. But I did find it was very handy for, for research purposes, because I'd take notes in my notebook and also take pictures and then look back and I could see exactly what something looked like. And little by little I started getting the pictures published. So now I always carry my little camera along, because I'm there anyway, so I figure I, I want to take a picture of something so I can refer back to it. And now I kind of take it a little bit more seriously. I try to look for a good angle on the right shot, and I pay attention to where the sun is and uh, kinds of very basic sort of things that photographers think about. The wonderful gate. Uh, it's a little tiny street off of Melrose Avenue, and there it is. It was, it's been there since 1926. It looks exactly the same. And it's a really wonderful Spanish colonial sort of structure, and it's, it, it for me, epitomizes old Hollywood and sort of the, the glory of the, the old movies. Everybody says old Hollywood is gone, and what I say to them, I say it's not really gone. Some of it's gone, sure, but it's hard to find because L.A. is the second biggest city in the United States, millions and millions of people, and it's, it's the most spread out city in the United States. Uh, so to find these sites and historic places that had a connection to old Hollywood takes some digging and takes some uh, turning around funny corners and you need a map. I found over 300 landmarks that are still there. there. There are a few that are only sites, but I really stuck when I was doing the book to places that are still there that people can still see and, and kind of uh, find uh, some connection with uh, the movies. There's a wonderful place that I discovered called Whitley Heights, which is the oldest neighborhood in Hollywood. It was built in 1918. It's a Mediterranean hill town. It's right above a, a kind of sleazy section of Hollywood Boulevard. But you get up here and there are these beautiful Spanish houses. And um, This in the 20s was where all the big stars and big movie people lived. Rudolph Valentino lived here for most of his career in Hollywood. Uh, there's a house that uh, we passed by that I took a picture of from the car. That was Robert Vignola, which many people forgot, but he was a big director. He directed most of Marion Davies' pictures. And the rumor is that R William Randolph Hearst paid for the house so that he would have a little twisting place for, uh, uh, to go to with Miss Davies. Uh, Whitley Heights is, is just beautiful. It winds around, and uh, it's, if you ever want to feel what Hollywood really was like in the 20s, here it is. It's right there, a little, little uh, capsule of... Uh, the best of old Hollywood. You don't want to disturb people when you're a writer or, or, or tourist or anything. And uh, a lot of times I find I can get my, a good shot right from, from, from the car. So why, why bother to park the car, which is a drag anyway? I mean, just stop, shoot, and uh, you've got it. Make maybe a couple of notes, uh, maybe not, maybe, maybe make the notes later. Um, so a pocket camera is just great for that because you just whip it out, shoot it, and you know you're off to the next uh, the next place. Doing the research for this book actually was fun because I got to talk to a lot of people, a lot of old timers like Buddy Rogers and um, Billy Wilder, the director. So I, I I got things from word of mouth. I read every autobiography and biography, and I, I read it in a special way because I was looking for addresses. I was looking for places. I did this book at a good time because there's a big preservation movement afoot in Hollywood and Los Angeles now. So people are taking a big interest in, in the past, and all the preservationist organizations were real helpful to me when I was uh, putting this together. I, I like to blend in. I think as a, a tourist and as a writer, you see more if you can blend in rather than stand out. Um, I first used a pocket camera in Japan, where, where um, you know, Americans stand out anyway, so I figured not having a camera around me just helped me be a little bit more uh, discreet. But when I'm writing um, and traveling, it's, it's great just to have 
just to know it's there. If there's some, and, and a lot of times a beautiful shot, I just see something, and I say, God, and, you know, the light's right, the angle's right, and it fits right in my little, uh, my 35 millimeter lens, and uh, zap, I've got it. And uh, sometimes I get really good shots, and I've, you know, I can't, I'm always more amazed than anybody else when something comes out, turns out well.